welcome to Virtualize Your Data Structure. Uh, my name is Brent Raymond. I'm the Senior Software Architect at the Art, Inst Art Institute of Chicago. Um, I'm also the organizer of the 4D Method user group, as uh, you might have, might have heard this morning. Uh, come see our website at 4dmethod.com. I'm going to go ahead and get started on the, uh, the slides here. There's uh, a lot of material. Um, uh, start with an introduction. Or as they say online, a, a TLDR, too long didn't read, abbreviated form of uh, what I'm going to talk about. Um, a virtual structure as it's defined uh, by this session is an abstraction layer for data and functionality that contains information that can be accessed by generic code to deliver application specific behavior. Now that's a mouthful. Uh, but we'll get through it. Uh, um, but you know, this is a, a different kind of a session. It's not uh, um, you know, new features in 4D. We've been doing this for uh, a long time uh, in different ways. And this is a, a currently going to be using uh, 4D objects to uh, uh, store information about the virtual structure. But you know, it's, a, it's, been, uh, uh, it's been around for a while. Um, we'll go over some background, a description. Uh, we'll do a, a sort of a project management style analysis of the strategy. Look at a case study from the Art Institute and uh, go through the uh, example database and, uh, and hopefully we'll have some questions. Um, here is the, one of the main interfaces for, uh, for our application at the museum. Um, now on the surface it doesn't look like anything all that special. Up here you have, you know, place to do uh, uh, multi-field searches with, uh, with uh, specific tokenized values, uh, a record area where you can add uh, all kinds of different uh, fields and different categories. You can store the searches, you can store the selections of fields that you're looking at in the record area, and you can store, the, the, uh, store and share the, uh, the, the selections of the records. What's interesting about it is this interface is completely generic. So the same code is used uh, for different tables. And it works with the virtual structure module to pull properties of the tables, properties of the fields, for how, the, how they're used and how they're rendered in the interface and what, where the data is pulled from and the queries, uh, what, what the logic of the queries are. So a little bit of background, or uh, as they say, and I, I'm also referencing some, uh, some, some Reddit uh, terminology here. Uh, for background, of course, uh, the subreddit history. Um, and I'll get to why I'm doing that later on. Um, as I mentioned, this, uh, this strategy has been in use at the Art Institute of Chicago uh, with, the, with our application CITI, uh, just an acronym, along with all the other acronyms out there. Um, it's, uh, it's been in use since the early 2000s. Uh, I didn't make this. It wasn't my idea, but I think it's pretty cool. Uh, it was de developed originally by Stefan Luque and Michael Blossom, uh, some of which uh, uh, some of you might know them. Uh, they're not in 4D work on anymore uh, for some crazy reason, um, but, uh, but they've all moved on. Uh, but their, their ideas were heavily influenced by the writings of uh, David Adams uh, and uh, uh, now Ed Hammond and I uh, uh, developed City and, uh, and work on the virtual structure module and uh, extend it today. So a little description, or uh, as they say in Reddit, today I learned. Um, this is just a general programming concept. It's not specific to 4D. Um, you could do this in any language, in any, any, anywhere where you're dealing with data or any structured uh, information that you're trying to share with people. Um, it's just, at its most base element, a data structure, a data dictionary, per se. Uh, it has tables, fields. The tables don't have to actually exist in the 4D structure, neither do the fields. The, uh, the fields, per se, could just be a formula or combinations of other fields or information from external sources. Um, uh, some of the properties that you would find in, uh, in the virtual structure definition would be stuff like uh, the access definition, the callbacks that are used for query and retrieval. Um, the uh, what security privileges should be checked and privacy restrictions of the data, uh, the uh, uh, rendering the appearance of the fields. So you know something like a column width, or you know you could even put in what font you want to use for this particular field. Is it bolded? 
controlled list values, so you know, this field only accepts values of these types. Uh, the relations that, that uh, the data follows for these, uh, for these uh, field values and uh, the data which, it, uh, which, which it's pulling from. And uh, functionality, you know, general functionality properties. Really, it's up to, uh, it's up to, up to the designer, the, the information that you put in your virtual structure. The registry is, uh, is accessed in turn, your virtual structure registry is accessed by generic code. In fact, anywhere you have uh, a property in the, in the virtual structure, it pretty, pretty well points to a place of the application that has been made in turn generic uh, and can handle common classes of tasks that, that, that you have in the application. Um, the application can be, in fact, if, if you really buy into the idea, you can extend your application by simply changing your virtual structure registry. You can just add a field willy-nilly just by saying, hey, there's going to be a new field. It's going to be handled like this. It's going to appear over here and have these uh, security restrictions. The, uh, the, the new, well, that's the next point, but... Um, yeah, a single, another benefit of it is that a single 4D database can be run in different modes simply by activating uh, sections of your virtual structure. Um, new properties are easy to add because once you've, once you've got it all set up, you, you just uh, declare a new property and then you, you use it somewhere. Somehow, doesn't matter, it's up to you. Um, and another big benefit is it can become basically a living documentation of the data in your system and the functionality of the application. So you can say, you know, it, it maps itself due to its very nature of being your map that your application references. Um, for some analysis here, or as I say on Reddit, explain it like I'm five, uh, I'm going to leverage a, uh, a project management style of approach called a, a, a SWOT, SWOT chart. You look at the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats of the strategy uh, based on whether they're helpful, harmful in their, their origin, whether or not it's, it's innately a strength of that approach or if it's just an external benefit of uh, you know, something that opens a door for you. And I'm going to try and get through all this so we can take a look at the code. So I'm, going to try and move pretty quick. Um, strengths, of which there are so many. <laughs> um, the naming and data constructs uh, are independent from the 4D structure. The naming, you can, you can change the names depending on where the application is being used, languages, so on, uh, the, uh, or the, the mode that the application is running in. Um, it uh, allows for easier user navigation of multi-table relational chains because they just don't see that. Uh, it limits structure bloat, uh, as in, uh, you know, when you're storing, a, whether you have a, a logical field that you don't have to uh, have a, a pre-calculated value stored somewhere. Um, it's just calculating it on the fly. Uh, it, it helps to unify the data presentation due to the centralized nature of the query and retrieval callbacks. All of the data is being queried in the exact same manner from the exact same method, and uh, likewise with the retrieval. It can have the effect of simplifying data access in the code, because uh, as opposed to having that logic repeated uh, in anywhere that you, you reference that field, um, you're just referencing, in turn, a, actually a constant which represents that field, uh, which, do, again, doesn't have to actually be a field in your database, your 4D structure. Um, it uh, facilitates access of data from external sources. Again, none of the uh, data actually has to live in 4D. You could be referencing other SQL databases, other APIs elsewhere, and yet it looks like it's a uh, field in your database. Um, as I mentioned, it's self-documenting for stuff like API access. All you have to do is say, uh, this field is going to be available in my API with this particular name, and uh, in everything else, the API can just draw from your virtual structure to, to define how it's going to be queried and, and delivered. And the uh, 
by its nature, the centralized data access allows you to optimize, really concentrate on optimize uh, your, you know, the functionality, the, the structure of your data uh, on the back end uh, and, and have it, let it have system-wide impact because everything is using that code. Weaknesses, okay. Uh, the built-in 4D user-facing interfaces, such as the query editor, editor, the quick report, uh, quick, re quick report editor, uh, labels, and all that, uh, it's it's no longer applicable because you're using your, you, you've you've gone off the grid. You're using your own uh, 4D structure, uh, data structure, uh, which which doesn't uh, uh, is not going to be available in those anymore. So that's kind of a bummer. Um, the having direct external SQL SQL access to your 4D database also circumvents the virtual structure, and uh, and also data retrieval uh, tends toward a per field basis. So there is some cost there. Uh, you you won't have giant uh, strings of uh, selection to array in this in this manner. Each field will be handled uh, atomically, so to say. Opportunities, okay. Uh, as I mentioned, it's really easy to run the application in different modes. At the, uh, and I'll get, I'll get to it later, but you know, at, at the uh, museum, we're running the same code base uh, in something like six or seven different, very different modes. Um, and I'll talk about that a little bit later. It works, it's perfect for something like an access control system. So if you want to have, uh, you know, roll your own uh, field privileges uh, for for your your uh, your application, or if you already have something like that, all you have to do is set up a reference between your virtual structure, your fields, your tables, and uh, and what privilege it needs to check per field, and then that becomes actually you can handle that generically. You ask it what privilege to check in your access control system, and then you get back an answer whether or not that should be uh, available. It enables easier interface exposure of data stored in object fields, which is really cool, big advantage there. You don't have to worry about, okay, how am I gonna expose this, this you know, particular attribute that's buried in an object field, even though you, you really wanna use those new object fields because they're great. Um, this opens that door for you for, for a way to expose those in the same, it looks like a typical flattened out field. Um, it encourages generic coding. Doesn't mean that you're gonna do that. However, it's a good idea. And we'll have to, uh, I think most of us here would understand that uh, uh, generic code is a, is, a, is a nice thing to have. Um, it scales well with data requirements. Uh, you know, some, some of the, uh, you know, your, your, you'll still be able to have your heavily normalized data uh, in, in the background without having to worry about it being confounding to your users to, to be able to understand how the relations are. And uh, again, with the, you know, the object fields where it makes sense, you can do that and, uh, and you don't have to build out you know, tables and to, to big, be big, ugly messes. Uh, and the, uh, it's, it's really readily set up for such things as the execute on server method property. So you can really leverage that uh, to uh, to handle all of your uh, your query and retrieval on your on your nice uh, beefy 64-bit servers. Um, and given the fact that you're not exposing your 4D structure at its at it, you know raw level, you, your the users are having to go through your access. Uh, uh, control your your virtual structure is having to refer to that. So if it if you've turned it off in the virtual structure, it just doesn't exist anymore. So there's inherently better data security due to the abstraction of the data access. Threats. Uh, it's additional work. That's a bummer, but uh, in the end, it actually pays off once you have this set up and you have these classifications of fields and and types of tables and that sort of thing, uh, it, uh, it, it becomes less work uh, over time because you're not having to uh, repeat a lot of uh, uh, code and, and uh, logic. 
um, it's a steeper learning curve for new developers. I had to go through it myself. I was confused. I'd never seen this before. It's odd. It's not what I see everywhere else in 4D. And, uh, and that can be a challenge. And I, I, I'm sure Ed would agree with that. And uh, if Mike, are you here? Mike Rommel? No? OK. That's probably why. But um, it can be difficult to explain to those with less systems engineering experience. And it can be a challenge to explain to anyone, uh, as I'm sure uh, is evident currently. So um, big disclaimer, virtual, the virtual structure strategy is not right for every application. And, uh, um, but hopefully uh, you'll see that it has a lot to offer if you do go through uh, the, uh, if you do uh, roll it out and uh, implement it. So getting to the uh, case study of the, uh, our uh, system at the museum, um, or as they say online, picks or it didn't happen. And here's a few, uh, few jazzy picks from, uh, from our collection, uh, some really neat, uh, neat art at the Art Institute. I invite you all to come visit us if you're in Chicago ever. Um, so uh, as I mentioned, the, our application is named City. So if I refer to City, it's not just the city of Chicago. It's our application. Uh, our main business is art. So our primary table is artwork objects. Um, the actual table structure in 4D has 63 fields most of which are actually only used in a specific mode of the application, uh, namely our web serving. But uh, the interface and our API uh, for objects show that we have 347 fields. Uh, so, you know, how did that happen? Um, we have 231 tables in the 4D structure. As I mentioned, it's heavily normalized. We probably... Uh, could easily have uh, double or triple that uh, if it was uh, done dif a different way. But the users are really only aware of nine tables. The virtual structure masks the complexity of the data structure and so that you can keep the glorious yet potentially confounding database design that you've, uh, that you've dreamed up and, uh, and seems to work uh, in, in, in your architect uh, mind um, and, and limit it to a sort of a flat list of fields that people don't have to really understand where the data is coming from. It just is that field for them. And uh, um, they don't have to know the technical side of things. So uh, at the museum, for our purpose, uh, user-defined constants are a must. Does anyone here use uh, user-defined constants? Ed? Of course. OK, a couple of us. Um, they're really easy to create with the 4D pop component. Uh, we'll look at that a little bit uh, when we get to the sample code. Uh, the, all of the virtual structure elements, the tables and fields, and their properties, uh, you know, like their name, such things like that, uh, all have an associated constant. Um, if you put it together with a predictable naming uh, convention, like if, if you see here, you know, it, our, our uh, fields are uh, prefixed by their module, their table, agent, virtual field, and then their name, uh, then it can be really easy. It, it's actually pretty nice that you can, you can use the autocomplete and, uh, and it's a lot more re readable than having a field number or something like that. Um, our constants browser doubles as a sort of virtual structure inspector. Uh, the, if you see here, uh, you, you, there's a list of callback methods. Um, in our inspector, you can, you know, given the uh, new, new uh, uh, capabilities of 4D uh, recently, you can just double click on those and open up the method or the way this is architected, uh, you can double click on the the field name or the constant name, and it'll open up a, an analysis of that. And so you see uh, in this picture, there's a uh, hierarchical list box that you can browse the, uh, the properties that you've defined. And there's also a, uh, a 40 object uh, breakdown of, uh, of what those properties are as well. Again, the, wherever you see these uh, virtual structure properties, they point to pieces of the application that, have, uh, that, are, that are basically generic. So, 
the more you have in there, the better. Um, right, so this is just a, uh, a, a field in our table. Um, the field has a number of four, that's its constant. That's its label, you can make the label whatever you want, depending on how it's registered, it doesn't change anything in the background. Uh, and so on and so forth, category, the callbacks, and the field model, which is our field type, handled in a uh, specific way. Um, yeah, so uh, coming to our access control at the, uh, at the museum, um, these are all the privileges. Every single field has uh, view and modify privileges along with functionality uh, throughout the application. Uh, and, uh, and access control is very important for, for our data, as you can imagine. It's a, a several billion dollar art collection and uh, they, there's, there's lots of buried secrets in there. <laughs> um, the, uh, the security module is all basically generic, as is this, uh, this interface. It allows for uh, different user roles by adjusting over 1,100 privileges. And uh, the majority of, uh, you know, how do you manage 1,100 privilege values? Well, uh, the virtual structure uh, registration actually handles all that for you because you're just uh, setting it when you set up the field and, and then you just set it and forget it. And, and if they have that checkbox on, then it's uh, referenced automatically. But that's a, a really uh, uh, interesting use of the virtual structure. That might have even been where the idea was born, frankly. Um, this is, uh, so this is our search area for searching a table. Uh, kind of some of the steps that it goes through is it, it goes to the virtual structure and it lists, uh, it looks for a list of fields that are enabled for searching. You don't have to enable a field for searching if, uh, if it doesn't make sense. Uh, it checks the security for, the, that the user can actually view that field whatsoever. Uh, it gets a list of the search comparators, so you can create search comparators that have logic that, you know, that, that is whatever logic you want to assign to them, you know, having keywording or includes or starts with or is before or contains, whatever. Um, it, uh, it sets up the, the entry according to whatever the field model is. So in this case, uh, you see that it's a, a choice list, and when you click into that field, it, uh, it not only has type ahead because it knows what the options are, but it has a uh, drop down of, of the values that could be chosen. And then uh, once you've filled everything out, uh, it, uh, it runs the callback method that you've set up for that field in your virtual structure. Um, the, the data view area does the uh, same kind of thing. It checks if you can view the field. It sets up the column width, which you can define in your virtual structure. Uh, it calls the uh, data retrieval callback method. It, uh, it does sets up things like drag and drop so that uh, all of that is actually handed, handled generically as well. And, uh, and it, it will pull a list of sort of uh, uh, faceted filter values from, the, uh, from the, the field definition so that uh, you, can, you can jump directly to those uh, records with those values. Uh, moving ahead to the uh, data entry again, uh, just uh, don't want to don't want to beat the horse too much, but you know, security privileges, loading uh, loading fields, how they're displayed, where they're displayed, uh, business rules for input, uh, the, the the generic kind of go to jump jump to this field for me sort of thing. It's all. Uh, it all draws from properties that we have that in the registration. Uh, and one last thing is uh, we have a, uh, a data batch change functionality. Most fields in city, uh, whether they're um, just basic text entry or they have uh, 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 selectable values um, or even when they're, they have uh, relate many related uh, uh, choices, you know, like a uh, relating two of your major tables together, um, or many-to-many -many kind of relationships with qualifiers and whatnot, uh, that is, again, all drawing from the, uh, the virtual structure. So we are just, uh, we are loving it, and it's, it, it works for us. Uh, um, and again, uh, we have, uh, we're running the same code base, and we can run it anyways, in up to uh, eight different application modes, simply by flipping switches. 
uh, that being you know, our production, our client server uh, mode, uh, a mirroring mode which blocks all data entry and uh, communicates with, with production for uh, pulling records that have changed. Um, we have an internal SOAP API, a web publishing mode which uh, exposes only a certain portion of uh, fields and a certain portion of records uh, via an API to the, uh, to the outside world. And then other you know, obvious modes like developer, test, and maintenance, and crash recovery, which, uh, which all manage uh, um, access to data and you know, functionality that uh, is controlled by those modes and are handled appropriately. A big plus that we've been able to uh, leverage this strategy for at the museum is, uh, is creating the custom API for your application. Uh, Someone uh, who's uh, far wiser than I said uh, uh, the best way to keep your application in use uh, at, a, at a company is to make an uh, external API for it uh, so that people can access the data from whatever, whatever other application, whether it be web, mobile, uh, sorry, my uh, redneck roots are leaping out, but uh, um, you know, just, just allowing for access to your data in, in other environments. And it's just a, a really huge uh, benefit to have for your system. So, and this is ready, ready packaged for that. Um, if you're interested, see some demo videos of City uh, that I put together, 4D at the Art Institute of Chicago uh, at the 4D Method site. There's a link here that's uh, available in the, um, in the keynote that you have on your, on your stub there, on your uh, flash drive. Okay, that was a mouthful. How am I doing on time here? About good, okay. Getting to the example database. That was a lot of information. Let's see it actually work, and uh, I like the uh, subreddit uh, programming. Um, just a quick overview. Uh, we have the, uh, the example code broken up into a few different modules. Of course, the virtual structure module, a, the generic manager module, and a, uh, a person module, which is the, uh, the actual, uh, what the data is that's gonna be leveraging the virtual structure and the manager, the generic modules. Um, right, uh, this is uh, fully functional, uh, the, the code that's set up in there. You can use it for, even if you don't have uh, as, as generic of a, a system as, as the Art Institute has currently, um, it's immediately, there's immediate utility, even if you're just putting this as a layer on top of your own uh, uh, 4D structure. So it's all ready to go and it, and it uses uh, objects currently. So let's take a look at it. Okay, and here's my little cheat sheet. And uh, so we're gonna take a look at the uh, the virtual structure module first here. It's all broken out in the, um, in the uh, code explorer. And, uh, and we, we tend to uh, split things up into private, public, and shared folders, even though it's not really a component. We're sort of following that, uh, that approach to our, to our code. So um, the properties that I have set up in, uh, in this test database uh, are basically, as you see listed here in the property list, uh, you have the, the singular and plural labels for the, the tables and fields. Sometimes it uh, doesn't always make sense. You know, sometimes you wanna have something specific for the plural name. Um, a Boolean says it's a table or a field, the table ID that a field might uh, belong to, uh, and so on, whether you, you can modify the, the, the uh, the privilege to say if you can modify, if, if you can search on this field. Um, uh, and currently we're using actually uh, uh, arrays for, for our uh, virtual structure at the museum. Uh, but uh, uh, you can't unfortunately put the uh, pointers into the, uh, uh, a, uh, uh, an object in a, uh, in a table. I'll show you the, where, it, where it's stored, but anyways. Um, so it's broken down into a table number and field number if it points directly to a, a 4D table uh, field or field. Um, the data type, uh, uh, whether or not that table uses the managers, the callbacks that are, that are set up for it. Um, all those are set up uh, 
within our registration for this uh, sample code. Um, as I mentioned, we use uh, the 4D pop component to, uh, to make new uh, uh, properties and whatnot. You see these, uh, these are the constants that are set up, but they all have um, a uh, sort of a uh, attribute name that we use in the, in the 4D objects. So they have a, 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 a object JSON ready version of their name. Um, and you can add uh, and delete uh, uh, new properties and new constants in the uh, 4D pop uh, readily. Uh, it's just really easy, nice way to, uh, to organize your, uh, your constants. Um, the, uh, so all of these are, uh, uh, the, the virtual structure itself is, uh, is created and stored on a startup or initialization uh, into a virtual structure table. Uh, the definition, each record in the virtual structure table contains a, an object field which uh, uh, has the, all, all properties about that particular element, that, that field or that table. Uh, that's, this is, again, just one way to do it. We're currently using uh, synced arrays, which is another way to do it. Um, you could store these objects in a, an external uh, JSON, JSON file or a multitude of files, and you can handle it, uh, control it all externally to your application. Um, right, so what does it look like? There's a little explorer uh, form here, and uh, run form. Let's run it again. Okay, maybe it's back here. Uh-oh, it's... Uh, Curse of the demo. Ah, yes. Okay, so all these uh, were defined basically on startup. That's just a UID. And here are uh, the objects, and you can flip through them and see what their value are, values are. So in this case, this is the uh, first name, last name, country. It has all the callback methods. These are all generic callback methods. Um, in this case, it's a, a person module specific uh, callback method. We'll look at that a little bit, but uh, you know, again, this is just one example of how this could be uh, set up. You can do the same strategy in your own application uh, and, uh, and, and have whatever properties that make sense to you. Sure, yeah, 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 please. Uh, yeah, no, I, I, I promised myself I would do stuff like that, but I forgot to, so. Um, I think mostly just because you don't need to. Uh, it would just be basically a um, pulling values out of the attributes, which you can uh, which you can handle otherwise. Yeah. Yeah. The, mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and and you know that could also be just done uh, within the list box. You could uh, instead of having you know, the, this gnarly UUID, you could extract the uh, attribute and put it there. Yeah, good question. Um, right. Uh, you know, it's, it's all up to your own coding. Uh, so if, if you, uh, if you uh, wrap your, your registration method uh, that says, uh, you know, what the, what the label is going to be, um, you, can, you can check that against your current structure, you know. Hmm? Obviously, it wouldn't make sense to have, a, you know, five first names. Right, yeah. It's all you know. Again, this, this is just an example of how you know. N you know, m is it production ready? Probably not. You'd want to harden it up. You know, like the callbacks. You know, you might want to check to make sure those methods exist. They're going to be called through an execute statement. That kind of thing. You know, there's there are those things that uh, that can be done with this. This is just an exercise. Um, right. So uh, getting back to the initialization. Uh, we have a, a, a VS init method here, which does nothing much more than actually uh, calls these methods. Um, and in this case, I've just broken out the uh, tables and the fields into two different methods, just so it's a little bit easier on the eyes, and so you know better what you're looking at, but they could be combined or be external. You don't even have to use uh, uh, 40 commands to create this. Again, you can use whatever you want. 
Um, again, uh, it's just uh, assigning a, uh, an identifying key for that. In this case, it's table one, because I know what that, uh, uh, what that value is. But uh, a literal person, people, is it a table? Yes, it is. Does it point to an actual 4D table? In this case, it does, because that's easier. Um, and uh, we have it set up uh, so that it has an associated fat text table. Maybe, maybe it's old fashioned, uh, an old fashioned approach, but uh, it's, it's worked for us uh, since the olden golden days. And so that's one of the things that I put in here. Um, and it is actually really flexible, as I'll show you. Um, and here we have all of the, uh, the fields hook. Um, same thing, assigning it a, basically a number, but this is easier to read. Uh, well, in this case, it's kind of ugly, but uh, this one looks like a first name for the most part. Um, you give it a, a data type. Uh, you're saying that it is a field. What the field model is. In this case, I mean field model by it's a gener general text field in a table. Um, uh, and it specifically points to the UID field. Um, it's using these callbacks, which are generic callbacks. Uh, you can't modify it, you can't search it, just because I said so. Um, another field here, first name, last name, same kind of things, identifying what you can do. Can you modify it, can you search it, what the callbacks are, what happens when you want to save something, what, what does it call when you want to save something. Uh, those are all text fields, those are all stuffed into a fat text table, and if I show you the, uh, the structure. Um, I'm basically registering these fields for use with the, uh, with the uh, virtual structure, uh, with the uh, generic callbacks. Um, and then we also have an example of how to do uh, an object attribute type of field, which is referring to the people detail field. Let's see, there we go. Um, it's, just a, uh, it's just an object in the main table where you can stuff any number of fields that, that, that you want to put in there. Same thing with the text. It, uh, you can put any number of fields in here. It's just pointing to a, uh, a field number. So you could have a thousand different uh, actual fields in there. Doesn't matter. It's going to store them and handle them all in the same, same generic manner. Um, and we have an example of a logical field, uh, which actually calls this uh, to assemble the data. It's just going to pull two fields and combine them together, first name and last name. So uh, those callback methods are uh, uh, interesting. Uh, I'll let you guys go into that um, if you would like to uh, on your own. But uh, just 4D code, nothing crazy. So let's take a look at some of the, uh, the calls that you can make to access your virtual structure. This is what's going to happen in the manager, but this is just a test version of that, you know, just to play with the virtual structure. Uh, the first batch of uh, uh, calls here, you're pulling the, the label, the singular label for, a, uh, for this person table. This is a person table ID. And we'll step through it here. Um, but as you can imagine, oh, darn, wrong thing. Uh, yeah, it hasn't been called yet, so, oops. And it gets person. Imagine that. Uh, the next one, people, and so on and so forth. The rest is pretty predict predictable. Um, yeah, and the, the table number for the actual 4D table. Um, a couple of uh, Boolean values. Oh, God, that's doing the wrong key. Sorry about that. Uh, right, Boolean value, is it a table? In this case, uh, oh, it hasn't run it yet. Yes, it's true. Can everybody see that? Um, so on and so forth, you know, and you can play with this. Uh, again, uh, list uh, virtual structures where a property ha has a given value. So you're actually searching your virtual structure for 
say, you know, a list of fields or a list of tables. So in this case, you're saying, uh, give me a list of uh, table numbers. And that pops into here. Clearly, there's one table, and it has the number one. And uh, then a list of fields. And then we're going to um, get a couple of properties of fields. Actually, I, I don't think are set up with uh, uh, plural names, but then this is how you get the names that you have set up. So it's, it's pretty obvious uh, uh, how it's, how it's uh, you know, what it's doing. But we'll look at that really quick. It's using the query by attribute in this case to find uh, uh, virtual structures with that property. And that's, that's pretty cool. Um, use of that, uh, that new command. Uh, I've enjoyed using it personally. Um, but uh, so yeah, so again, uh, there's g in this example, there's some generic query get and save methods. Uh, like I mentioned, uh, there's a, you can also have a very specific logic, whatever you want to do uh, with the data um, put into other callbacks, however you want to structure it. It's just an idea to hopefully give you other ideas of how this could be used in your own application. So uh, let's take a look at it in, uh, in the manager. This is, again, very simple. Um, I'm going to add a record, gives it an ID. I'm going to click in my name. I live here. And this is not enterable, but uh, when it's displayed, you know, again, this is not production ready, but yeah, so now it's there. Um, I can add another one, just so we can look at the, uh, and then that's all saved using our generic uh, callback methods. We can search on something like uh, first name. I could do other fields as well. Um, and so yeah, so I've displayed basically the retrieval, data retrieval, data saving, and uh, data searching. Now let's look at uh, what's actually happening in the background. Right, so when you run this, let's see. Yeah, so it's calling, uh, it's loading the data. Oops. It's uh, doing things like uh, getting a list of fields. Tell me all the, the, you know, the, the virtual structures that are fields. It's pulling the, la the singular labels for them all. Uh, getting the callback, the data retrieval callbacks. It's setting up whether they can be modified, the fields can be modified or not. And then it's just putting them into the, uh, it's running the, uh, the callback methods and adding them as a, uh, a column in your list box. Um, again, you never see the people tables ever directly referenced in this generic code. And as you register more fields, they'll be added automatically and functional automatically in your generic, te uh, in your generic code. Um, right, so, uh, right, and this is setting up uh, whether, you know, what fields can be searched. Which fields have you turned on for search? Then they'll be in that drop down. Um, in here, same thing for saving. You know, what, what callback should I call for, uh, for saving? And that's on data change in, uh, in a cell. And, uh, and then it just uh, executes that, uh, that generic method with, uh, with whatever new value that you've entered into that field. And lastly, not right now, Ikea. Um, lastly, uh, the, uh, what happens as you search. Same thing. It's uh, getting the property, the, the callback set, uh, that you set up and running that callback and then reloading the data. Again, not production ready. A lot of things you could do differently. Yes? Uh, problems when we're trying to use transactions? 
Um, no, uh, I mean the uh, the setting of the of the data. Uh, if you were to, you know, in this case, it's very atomic. You're setting one one field at a time, and if if it were more extensive than that, you know, if if you had to call out somewhere or, or do several different tables, like in the 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 fat text table or something, you know, you just you wrap it all in the the, the generic callback in in this instance. Uh, for anything that has to happen within a transaction, that, you know, it's it's really just an idea of of a starting point for whatever you need to do to save your data, and then beyond that, it's it's in it's in your realm of uh, what happens next, basically. Um, so uh, so that's the manager. That's how it's being used. You might have seen that there's a application mode uh, down here in the corner, just saying it's. It's normal. Um, we could change that application mode uh, by, right, um, it's in here, where if I just, uh, this is actually done on startup, but um, I'm going to cheat and uh, set the application mode from normal to super. And, uh, and immediately it will. Uh, it will it redoes the registration and um, enables a, uh, a new field to be made. And if I show you uh, in the init, getting there, getting there, everybody. Um, in the field hook, when I enable super mode, it registers a new field which is zip code, which is put into the object field. So I've, you can create a new field without even changing your 4D structure, which is just really cool because, you know, we all get a lot of common requests, uh, such as adding fields or, you know, fields are pretty important, of course, but, uh, you know, and whatever, whatever, whatever you can make generic makes uh, handling all those requests a lot easier when you can just uh, add something to your registration, and boom, it's 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 everywhere. It's you're able to batch change it per se in City. It's it's immediately available in your interface with uh, the comparators that you set up with it. Um, all the saving, all the, the the business logic, what has to happen once that that value is changed, what has to be informed per, per se with um, mirroring and whatnot. Um, but yeah, so we uh, we enabled super. We uh, we reran the registration, and then we can see that that field has now been added here. You can search on it. I'll put in a couple values. You know, you could you could add some validation per se, like callback for data validation to uh, to to that field, uh, so that that wouldn't be acceptable. And then you could say search on it, but it's gonna well so. You see, it didn't, I should have put something more different, but you can see it's actually searching on it. You get the idea. Um, so that's about it. It's, it's, all, uh, it's all there in the example database. A um, uh, lot, uh, lot of interesting stuff in there, but it's really up to, uh, it's up to you guys what, what properties make sense for your applications. And, uh, and maybe, maybe you've already got some uh, generic code that could leverage such things. Um, uh, yeah, so now, uh, as they say on Reddit, uh, ask me anything. Question. Right. Part of this exercise was taking uh, our current uh, functionality uh, and seeing uh, how we could do it with the, the, the new objects, because it's, it obviously is kind of ready-made for that. It's a, as I think Laurent said, uh, you know, these objects are associative containers, and uh, it's, it's perfect for these kind of virtual structure definitions. Um, we did it before with uh, synced arrays. And so as you create a new field, it adds it to, you know, expands all the arrays, puts a number here, puts the values for the properties and all the other synced arrays, uh, which was actually kind of 
cool because you could use pointers much more readily. You can't do that in stored objects currently. So there's a lot of different ways to do it. Again, it's just a strategy. How you do it, what you do with it is up to you, but uh, um, we have found a just massive amount of utility in it. And, uh, and, and in fact, in talking to other people from, you know, other, you know, who write other languages and other systems, you know, there's so many of the uh, concepts uh, uh, are recurrent in, in, in other areas. Yep. Yeah, there's a reason. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. If if I had taken another approach to it, which I started with, uh, and just uh, registered them in memory, um, you could do pointers there. You can have pointers in an object variable, but not in an object field. But then you can't do the query by attribute, and there's no equivalent that I know of. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah. There's reasons, you know. It's a, there's a. Yeah. No, it's it's not. You know, there's ways around it. You need know, to store a table in a field number if you want to point directly to an actual 4D field. Uh, but uh, it's a little bit less uh, beautiful than having a, a pointer to that specific field. Right. 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 Exactly. Yeah, that's a bummer. Yeah, yeah. Right, right. Yeah, you can check for those things. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's a. Seems like all advice is time bombed. So yeah, it's a. <laughs> but you know, again. Do it however you want, store it however you want. It's just the concept of having this functional uh, dictionary associated with your data in your application uh, that you can just, you can, you can tell it how to, how to use this field, how to use this table, where should this table appear, where should this field appear, how should it appear, what do you do with it, uh, what kind of uh, checks and what security should be associated with it. And, uh, and a whole bunch of stuff. Other questions? Um, yeah, so the whole thing with the Reddit is uh, I made a subreddit for 4D, uh, 4D coding and 4D subjects. It's uh, that path, 4D apps. Uh, it's a subreddit for us. Hardly anyone's gone there or done anything on it. But I really dig Reddit because it's kind of like a nug where you can say, hey, I like this topic and push it to the top. And that's what uh, an upvote is. So uh, if you're interested, which I hope you are, you know, come and uh, add some discussion to the uh, subreddit. Uh, thank you, everyone.